Hello and welcome to the FEZ Show. I hope you all had a lovely Easter weekend and are ready to join us in some great Formula E content. First, the motorsport community sorry, lost a true great in Sir Sterling Moss and everyone here at Formula E Zone are sending our thoughts to Sir Sterling's family and friends. But on today's show we have a great guest lineup to run you through today's topics. Joining me today is Edward Hunter and Jack Pickering. Hello boys. Hey Jack. And I agree with you completely about Sir Sterling, a big loss to the motorsport community. Yeah, uh, morning everyone. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's not been the best weekend, but yeah. Uh, as long as I suppose everyone is safe, I don't know. So Sterling, he had a, he had a fantastic life. You know, he did he did what he wanted to do. He was obviously great at it. So, um, obviously, to ninety years old too, nearly died in nineteen sixty two at Goodwood in that huge accident. So it lived a lot longer than perhaps many thought he would. Of course. So you know, as as it's sad, it's obviously it's great that we can just celebrate his life in a, yeah. in a sense. Um, but obviously, we've got loads of great Formula E topics to talk about today. And the first one, okay, I know we've sort of talked about it before with the calendar, but there's been some new news on it. So according to Eformula D, who managed to find an interview that Alejandro Agag has done um, in an Italian newspaper. Um, he said that London and New York are very unlikely to happen because of obviously the situations which we've discussed and we'll go into them in a moment. Um, but he said Berlin is still possible, which is obviously happening in June. And I thought that was, he said in the interview that Berlin is still possible and it gives us hope. It gives us hope that we can go racing. But honestly, Jack, I think everything's quite unlikely. But the only good thing that he said in that interview is that he sort of confirmed what we were talking about last week in terms of pushing the calendar back into September, August time, allowing us more time to get races in and potentially racing on permanent tracks like the Algarve in Portugal and Valencia. So, you know, there are other options out there. Yeah, I think uh, I think Alejandro might be a big fan of this show because last uh, last week I did say we Berlin, yeah, is likely, and then go to Valencia for season finale. So I'm not sure if he's listening. If so, good morning, Mister Agag. Um, but yeah, I think um, uh, I think it's yeah yeah I think that I think that's the correct option. I would like to see um, if uh, if we do go to permanent circuits, then yeah. Uh, Port, uh, Portimao is one of my favourite circuits in the world. I'm so happy it's just been given FIA Grade One status, as that means uh, Formula One can go there. Um, and yeah, Don Donington Park, that used to be where we held all the preseason testing. That's where preseason testing is touted to be held in November, and it's just up the M1 from where I am right now in Northampton. So I'm I'm all for. Donington Park but also I would see the sense in going to Berlin and Valencia for the final two races of the season For me though Ed he says he wants to do this race in June and he's still hopeful for it but you know they're still, still in the news and like in just normal news in terms of like they're not country European countries won't be opening the borders to like July so mm. we might be able Germany might be able to go and have a race in June maybe they might be in the state where we can but maybe other countries around the world like England for example might not be ready so when most of the teams are based in England and then trying to get their stuff to Germany if it can't happen then surely Berlin won't happen in that June spot yeah, you have to think logistically. It's going to be a bit of a nightmare, exactly for those reasons that you can't. That a lot of you got a lot of teams based in the UK trying to go to Berlin. When yeah, I mean you could have Berlin as a sort of clo behind closed doors event, I guess. But even then, I feel like that. I feel like Formula probably wouldn't would prefer to not to have to do that. But they may if they if they're intent behind Berlin doing it that way, they may not have a choice. So that's the only way they can do it. But yeah, I uh, I think oh, it's I think it's a little bit naive from a gag, and I, I noticed he has this tendency of putting out very optimistic uh, um, quotes out in interviews for people to latch on to. Maybe if he, if he does it for people like us, I don't know. So maybe like you said, Jack earlier, he watches this show, he puts out positive statements for us to talk about, and there's a sort of virtuous circle going on. I don't know. 
No, I, I think it's obviously, it's, it's difficult because obviously he wants to put out news that, you know, Formula Maria obviously was still looking at possible races. We want to get the season done. Like, I understand that from his point of view, wanting to get that sort of, that, that news out. But I just feel, you know, I know we're only in April at this precise moment and who knows how long this lockdown will last for. But it's, as I said, I'm going to, you know, refer back to the interview I did with Trevor Carlin where he said that, international motorsport will be the last thing that happens so if i suppose i know audi have got some sort of factories in in but obviously porsche won't i think porsche are all based in germany or you know wherever they're based getting people over will be difficult uh, to even just if you wanted to have a race in in england for example because let's say most of the teams are here so it makes sense let's just do a race at donington or silverstone for example but, you know, getting all the teams across might be a challenge. So we might be in a situation where we are waiting uh, for a very long time until we actually, you know, the end of August and September, October, potentially, of actually getting another race jack in Formula E. Well, yeah, um, yeah, I think the, I think the cutoff will be start of start of October. I don't think we can do a race later than that. And I reckon if if it is, if we do get to if we do get to September or October, maybe just make season seven, six, seven. Yeah, just yep. had to calculate which season we're in now. Um, <laughs> six and a uh, half. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, I think season seven would start. I would I would expect mid to late January. I think would be the the ideal option for Diria. Um, it would uh, it would make sense to do, to uh, to have a compacted season next season as 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 long as all this blows over, um, then then we can finish this season and then we can go to um, uh, and then we can have season seven because the worst the, the the thing that we definitely do not want is this season to be null null and void because I mean especially for the likes of. De Co- um, uh, Antonio Felix da Costa and Mitch Evans, who are on the verges of winning their first title in the series. No, f- for sure. Obviously, there's so many. It's like in many sports around the world at the moment. The people at the top and the people in in the middle have got so much to fight for, and, and you know, taking that away from them, it would be painful even for them. Even though we haven't completed a season as such. I think, though, moving on slightly, just what sort of tracks, though? Because Alejandro Gaggi said permanent racetracks. And obviously that goes against Formula E's ethos, but just to get the season done, it makes sense. But where could we go? You know, in that interview, you know, the Asian leg that was once, like, touted in terms of we'd finish the race in Sanya, we'd go back to Sanya, maybe try and get a race you know, Seoul, because obviously South Korea are on the mend a little bit, so maybe try and use that, but obviously getting people over there would be a massive logistical battle. So what sort of circuits could we go to potentially in Europe, maybe um, in Asia, um, to sort of, you know, actually get the season finished? Ed, I'll throw that to you. Fair enough. <laughs> I was just thinking of tracks. Uh, I, I think when you say it, circuits may be in Asia, my head sort of goes to Suzuka, but I'm not sure Japan are handling the pandemic all that well at the moment. So that fits circuits like Fuji, um, Autopolis, I don't know, all in sort of the same kind of... But like... could, could Macau be an option? Because obviously Macau happens at the end of the year. Okay, so obviously they'll be setting up Macau... At, Formula 3, at, yeah. For, for, at a certain point, yeah. And obviously probably in Asia by that time, you know things by December time that might be you know doable October I don't know when I think it is December but it could be before because they'd be setting up they could just set it up before have a Formula E race there and then just leave it up until the actual Macau GP is 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 there Jack do you see that as a viable option yeah yeah I I would I would see it as a viable option and 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 I I quite like to see Formula E race at uh, at Macau. Admittedly, it is seriously tight for half of it. However, that uh, however that long uh, that long run into the first braking zone, I think I think there would be so much Formula E chaos. I think uh, I think I'm going to call it uh, around the streets of Macau. Uh, Formula E was supposed to race in Hong Kong this season, which is just over 
it was what 30 30 miles away um so yeah i uh, i think this would be a good replacement in terms of other circuits i could think of um i know that the shanghai formula 1 circuit is is reopening in june and so maybe go uh, go to that circuit uh, because because there is a cut off where you don't have to do the long straight so so we can just not use that bit and also also the shanghai circuit is in shanghai city so it yeah, it's, it seems like there. a good it seems like a good formula e viable option yeah, I think that that would be a good shout to be honest with you, um, because you can like, there is a metro line in in Shanghai that you can, you can take passengers from the city into the circuit and it drops you right outside. Um, but I'm sort of just moving away from this topic now because I think we've discussed it. I think you know yeah. the calendar is is going to be it's going to be something that uh, I don't know is going to be completely discussed until this sort of situation is over and it, this story is going to chop and change and there will be new elements that we'll, we'll have to go over in the coming weeks about what's actually happening with the calendar and when we will go racing but we'll just have to wait and see it was interesting to see what a gag had to say but i think we should sort of move on now into our next topic and that's fan boost okay because uh, is fan boost dying that's my question because I just don't see a lot of it. And does the sort of system need to be changed? Does it need to become more powerful? Does it need to last longer? Does it need to actually have an, a, an effect on the race rather than them just pushing a button? They go for an overtake for five seconds. It either comes off or it doesn't come off. Should it be something that's a bit longer? It lasts a lap or maybe use fan boost as some sort of tr strategic element, Jack. Well, I'll, I'll be honest, I haven't seen much use of fan, but well, in, 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 not in terms of the actual racing, in terms of actually people voting online. I've seen a few people here and there voting, but, but, but also the drivers don't get as much invested as it, uh, as before. Um, because three, three or so years ago, you'd have like, uh, you, uh, you'd have like Nelson, doing doing a piece to camera or something it's like vote for me and fan boost kind of that kind of thing and that and nowadays it's just like yeah fan boost is open if you want to vote for it yeah just yeah and and i just feel like the whole sport isn't as invested in it as it was before they uh they could make a few changes to fan boost i'm uh i'm not thinking in terms of like the actual deployment or thing but um in the whole of season five, Stoffel van Dorn won the vote every single race. And so far in season six. Uh, and yes, he is a very popular driver. Um, but it does kind of seem like, come on, let, let, let someone else have the fan boost Stoffel. Yeah, I remember Mitch um, Evans was moaning about it too. Like there's a picture of him with a piece of cardboard a, saying, um, stop Stoffel winning fan yeah. boost or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, I'd um, uh, I'd quite like to see some changes to fan boost, but also I don't, I don't feel that it's as effective as it was uh, in 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 the in the first gen cars because the second gen cars have so much more power, and so that means that the boost, even though it's still 50 kilowatts more, it just doesn't have that same effect because they are running at higher at higher uh, power power outages. And I can't remember, because I do remember that they could alter um, pre in the Gen 1 car. I'm, I'm pretty sure it probably has carried over to Gen 2. But you could alter the, the outage. So you didn't have to run it at the full power at 250, for example. Um, but you could dial it down towards a lower power setting, but you'd use it for a slightly longer period of time. Except than just nobody a did short, that. <laughs> short burst. But no one... I think I think no. I think that was more common than actually using the full burst of energy because obviously, if you use the full two fifty kilowatts, your energy level completely like evaporates in terms of it uses more energy. So therefore, if you can sort of use it and not use it for longer, but then not lose as much energy um, during that time, I think that that that's what they sort of they sort of tried to do i don't know if that's carried over to gen 2 so therefore even though they are running at a higher power use they're not using those 250 to sort of um to sort of do those overtakes i just think yeah i i agree with you jack the fan engagement is not there you don't see the hashtag fan boost hashtag genre Vern anymore you used to in in season 
two, three. You used to see that a lot on Twitter. You used to see, okay, I can see the people who are voting, right? But now, like, Fan Boost is announced on Monday. You don't, you don't hear from it. You know, you just hear who's won it by the time you get to the race on Saturday. You don't actually see many, many tweets about Fan Boost. You might just see the odd team tweet here and there about Fan Boost. But you don't actually see the, you know, the, the actual fans tweet Ed hashtag whoever and hashtag whoever. Yeah, I, look, I think the majority of the voting is actually done on the website. So that might be why nobody ever sees it, I think. And yeah, I agree. I agree. And especially what you you and Pico were saying that sort of you get this sense of formerly almost being embarrassed of it compared to the early seasons in that they had it front and center when they launched, especially. And now over time, they sort of, oh, by the way, we also still do fan boost, but nobody cares. And they sort of just move on quickly. And sort of even in VT features, it feels like, it's almost sort of an afterthought. That's what I would describe, especially the way it even shows up mid-race and the commentators have to awkwardly address that the fan boost winners have been announced. That always feels like um, such an afterthought to me. Like it's, it's no longer the main focus part of Formula E's brand. It's almost been outmoded in a way by uh, the uh, invention of attack mode, which seems to be, have gone down much more popularly. Um, it seems to have much more favorable re- reception from Formula E fans, I think. I yeah. would like to uh, I, I would like to point out that I, I I did actually have to tell someone at some point that they were no longer doing like the Instagram vote because 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 it used to be able to do it on Instagram and then they dropped the Instagram not vote not long into in since Probably they because so few it people up. use it yeah. and so. Um, and so yeah, I had to uh, I I had to comment on a few things saying like you know that does nothing now. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, it doesn't. It did nothing anyway. But yeah. <laughs> right. Right away, but. So what I want to talk about actually now, because I was I'm in an hour whether or not to tell this story or not, but I'm going to tell it because obviously, back in season two, Formula Reason actually sort of revealed that the fan boost system wasn't actually working, and maybe this has been part of its downfall as we've been discussing because. Formula E have had to adapt to that story and maybe those adaptations have made it harder for the fans to sort of engage and sort of, you know, actually vote. Because I'm going to tell the story. So the story is quite simple, actually. If back in season two, there was a lot of... People were unsure how valid these fan boost votes were and where they were coming from. And there was a lot of drivers in press releases saying, like, we need to check these numbers. And Formula E weren't really responding. They were working with Telescope at the time to sort of explain it sort of to, to do the fan boost the telescope was sort of the people in charge of the software and how fan boost worked but as i said the drivers were thinking i think this needs to be checked out because these numbers are not right it seems like there's a massive jump and little old me here um who know nothing about source code absolutely nothing about source code in html5 went into fan boost's website opened up the source code i clicked a few buttons got a bit lucky and I, f- no, I didn't crash. The- I didn't crash the website, but I got I got a bit lucky, and I I stumbled across the live feed of who was getting votes and who wasn't getting votes. So I could see I literally had everyone's votes in front of me, their live vote at that time. So what I decided to do, I couldn't believe I found it. Kept it quiet for. I found it actually in a hotel room. So how it actually worked was someone messaged me on Facebook. I don't know who. Someone messaged me on Facebook and told me Fan Boost is rigged in Berlin, season two, and proved it to me. He said, Oliver Turvey and Nico Prost have zero votes. No one has voted for them, right? So if I give them a vote, he'll move up one. And then if I give Oliver Turvey two votes, he'll move up against... And, and he did that. He showed me it. And I was like, wow. And he said, the reason I can vote multiple times is because it didn't matter what email you put in in the Fan Boost system at that time. You could have put job at job.com that was that registered as an email you could put xxx at xxx.com that was an email it was it counted as a valid vote and i think that was me because <laughs> that i did that i did that i remember do i remember doing i i i remember doing that for 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 the fan this is before i got professional um <laughs> and so yeah i'd um i uh i did do that a few times so that might have been me telling you about that years yeah. ago so so 
Uh, so anyway, so, move, so I could so straight away I knew that the email system was bugged because you could have you you could have voted a million times a day if you wanted to. If you wanted to sit there and vote for Lucas Degrassi a million times, all you needed to do was write a million different emails and you would have voted for him. But that wasn't the actual sort of way people were doing it. That was one way you could bot the system. So I had the live timing. So what I decided to do over a two week period between the Berlin race and the London race. I, I was I found the actual system because at the time in Berlin I hadn't actually found the source code and I went away the source went dead he didn't tell me how he did it and I had to go I knew it was broken and I was like I've got to find out how it's broken so again over the next few days I've managed to find it so when Fanboost opened because Fanboost didn't open a week before it opened two weeks before so I waited for Fanboost to be that two week gap between London and I documented it from day one to day 14 to so when the actual race went out and what happened was stunning because obviously it sort of started i think it was simona di silvestro jumped out to an early lead and always in every single fan booze race that season simona di silvestro jumped to a massive to a massive high and she and this then brought into the example of botted votes because then you could trace, because you, I was monitoring it every hour, she was like, 50 votes, and then all of a sudden, 1,700 votes. And I was like, oh, that looks suspicious as anything. But then you're like, well, will that trend continue? And that trend didn't continue, so then she would just plateau, like hardly get any votes. The worst was marching Wa. Um, he'd get no In votes. In all senses throughout. of the word, yes. Yeah. He'd get, he'd get more no votes, basically, and then overnight... 1,000 votes. Boom. No votes for the rest of the day. And second night, two, he's on another set of 1,000. And it just kept increasing by 1,000. And I was like, that has got to be botted votes, right? And then all of a sudden, as 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 the weeks sort of, as the days went on, the more botted votes came. And drivers who, who didn't think they were being botted were being botted. And who was botting them, I don't know. It could have been a random person. It could have easily been the teams because the teams would have found out if their team clocked on like I did before, that they could just do whatever they wanted with the system and, and get votes that way, then easy peasy, just spend 20 quid on botting 10,000 votes, for example, because they were cheap. Like I went on a botting site, it actually said, type in the website you want, the link that you want, pay this much, this many votes will come on to And I was like, oh, I, 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 I found the website that I could actually do it. And I was like, wow. So basically, over the period of time, tons of botted votes. Even on race day, Nick Heitfeld jumped 40,000 votes on race day in a space of an hour. And it, you knew that these votes were botted because it was happening within a space of 20 minutes. It wasn't a prolonged... It was like, And then it stopped. Like, no votes happened after this 20 minute or 10 or half hour period. I remember you know, following it. I remember I put everything on like a spreadsheet and on graphs. And then I thought to myself, okay, in the London, I was actually, I was actually even doing it in the London press room with Formula E right behind me. Because actually the main people from Formula E that day were sitting behind me. I was still checking the fan boost system into the race. And it wasn't really being botted into the race. It sort of finished by the time the race had started because fan boost and votes were announced six minutes into the race. So I then turned to Formula E and I said to them after that race, I said, look, I've got the information to prove that fan boost is rigged and i presented the information to them in, in an email the following day i said look here is all my findings all my things and then a formula e, they went to telescope and they telescope gave them their results from fan boost and then they gave them mine now the numbers weren't identical now there's a reason why the numbers weren't identical because when i was i don't know when they were time stamping their votes so obviously they could have a different timestamp to my timestamp. So the votes were slightly off when I took the pictures and then when I screenshotted it on my computer. That's what I mean. But the Formula E said they were off by a little bit, but they were basically identical. And from that moment, Formula E had to completely change how they operated Fanboo. So now, for example, you have to verify your email. Ways you didn't do that before. You had to verify your email that came because of our story. That happened. Telescope was gone. Te by Telescope, they've added a new partner. You can't now... Then then that new partner made it much harder for the likes of me, who know nothing about source codes, to actually like get on top of and actually find the votes. So they blocked me pretty well. But then Formula E went one step further just to prove 
that no one could if someone did find it no one could increment it by an hour to see how you could then they said right the votes update every 24 hours so you sort of can't you have to rule out bots in that sense like because you can't be sure because the vote was updated 24 anything can happen in that 24 hour period from when it was and it was like it's five o'clock every five o'clock it updates but i can't see the votes anymore sadly um but so if someone has a big jump in 24 hours you could just say oh someone obviously voted a lot for him or it's bots but there's no way to prove that so yeah an amazing story of how it was rigged but amazing to see how former have adapted to that and maybe how you know telescope at that time they didn't they probably didn't expect little me to go but the best bit was is after i released the story i was actually outside of my garden putting some washing on the line and i'm getting a message from lucas degrassi via twitter who was like i can't believe your story i can't believe i was bodied but to be fair lucas degrassi at the time he didn't need to be bodied he was the driver that actually consistently got the most votes consistently without it didn't look suspicious at all it just gradually increased every day so it looked like a, a a trend of a popular driver getting votes over a series of time basically but that was the best moment for me was when lucas degrassi messaged me on twitter and i was putting the washing out on the line and he was like mate this is unbelievable but then obviously formula have put things in place to sort of stop that from happening but you know you need a proper proper geek at this precise moment jack i was, i just love that story because it sounds so much like the formula e version of watergate especially with this super secret source that contacts you on facebook and tells you yeah. spills the beans to you and that's how it that's how it started it, it was amazing absolutely amazing so i suppose as you said we're running out of time there's one little thing that i want to talk about and we did talk about esports but something has happened in the esports world jack that i think's amazing and, and i think if formula e do get on the esports bandwagon which i'm sure they will um they could do something like this and it could really boost the popularity of the series now max verstappen has joined the v8 supercar series and obviously the v8 supercar series have done an amazing job obviously they normally race in australia um but they've 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 decided to drive on tracks like monza spa and so forth tracks that they wouldn't actually drive on and they've got max verstappen joining them now do you see, like, should Formula E, if they do do something on R Factor 2 or whatever platform they decide to do their esports on, do you think that they should try and tout, get a Max Verstappen, get a Lando Norris, ask Charles Leclerc if he wants to, all these F1 drivers who have now really taken to esports, really taken to what's, you know, going on. Obviously, all the IndyCar drivers are on iRacing at the moment. They did a race last night. I think it would be amazing just to tout different drivers from different series and make them drive a Formula E car. 100% I would love to uh, I would love to see some drivers who aren't in Formula E compete in uh, in an online uh, in an online race and, and 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 it is also like I said last week I think this is the only way of seeing Max Verstappen in a Formula E car because I don't think that he is going to make the switch anytime soon um, but yeah it would be it would be fantastic to see some dri uh, see some drivers. Um, I remember seeing an Instagram story the month or so ago from Edo Mortara, and he was in his sim racing thing. And I haven't seen him in any race uh, in any of the big races like the last few weeks. So maybe, maybe get him into player. into maybe get him into the actual uh, maybe get him into an actual race with with the Formula E stuff, but we uh, we believe something might be on the way with that. So we're not we're not 100% sure, but something might occur. Yeah, Formula E are on the case of trying to maybe do something with esports because at the moment they're one of the only series that so these main series that actually hasn't hasn't done any esports yet. But Ed, just to wrap up, really, how you know? Imagine Formula E you know attracting the likes of Landon and Max Verstappen you know a Formula 1 driver some IndyCar drivers and then you get the chance if they streamed the race how they you know try and manage the energy because obviously they would have never done that before obviously they know how to lift and coast but managing the energy at the same time over a 45 minute race if Formula 1 were to do a full 45 minute race 
you know, seeing drivers that are not in that may be in Formula One and actually put their hand to a Formula E car might be just amazing to watch. It would be, and I think they're more likely to do it on esports than they would say join a real Formula E race. I think they've only had people like Felipe Massa, whose careers have sort of obviously ended, and they're more open to trying new uh, different series. But uh, I think the key thing for Verstappen is that he ruled out driving in the F Formula 1 2019 game because he thinks it's too arcadey. So Formula E have got that problem in that all the other stuff they've done outside of our factor is probably way too leaning towards arcadey. I'm specifically thinking of the mobile games like Real Racing 3 that they use in the um, e-races in, in, at the actual events. But I think Verstappen, there's no way in hell that Verstappen would be caught dead driving one of those. So... <laughs> I think it has to be an, an R Factor 2 thing that, that Formula E has to go. I don't, I don't think they can go down the real racing free route. I think they've got to go through either something like a virtually live that they've been working with and, and, and the people there that have been making the tracks and so forth, or they go down an R Factor 2, two route. Yeah, I mean, there's they, definitely the support for it from, like I said, from Studio 397 when we talked about this last week. So, so yeah, I, I, I think I think the building blocks are there to make it happen. It just depends how badly Formula E is willing to move heaven and earth to get it. Yeah, and obviously there's been so many Formula E drivers, Stoffel van Dorn, Antonio Felix da Costa, Maximilian Gunther, former Formula E drivers in Felix Rosenquist, Mitch Evans and James Collado were in the races, Pro Series on the weekend. So... You know, I, I think, that honestly, the, the, the Formula E drivers are there, just Formula E have got to do something now. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, from what we're hearing, that, you know, they are working on something. But I suppose Formula because Formula E fell so far behind the game in terms of esports, that they've, they're now playing catch up to have actual software and actual tracks to try and... And to try and actually do a, an, an event via esports. And they don't have a community, really, either, if, like... Is sim- they don't have a sim racing community behind them, the Formula E, unlike some of these others that we've talked about. Yeah, so which obviously they'll need to they need to establish, and they need to obviously if they're going to do this before they've got time because I reckon this lockdown period will last uh, a, a while yet. But they've they've missed the early boat. But hopefully they can if they do get something on they can catch up. So boys, I think we're going to end the episode there. I think thank you so much for coming on. Really enjoyed the episode. Uh, pleasure, Jack. Yep, thank you. Um, we will be back tomorrow, obviously discussing some more more content on Formula E and, and for the foreseeable future, seeing how long this lockdown goes on. If you are enjoying the content, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe, hit that bell notification so you always know, basically, when we our video has dropped on our channel. Thank you so much for watching. You have been watching The FEZ Show, and we will see you tomorrow.